Welcome to Riven Roll. I'm Amanda. This is Aaron. And back there is Carmen. We wanted to talk about our experience towing with the RAV4 Adventure, its towing capacity, its weight, and Carmen's weight. So one of the things that we wanted to do to make sure that all of our math was accurate was to reinforce that math by going to one of the cat scales weighing stations. So we're going to go through that process. Um, we are going to show you how we downloaded the apps on our phones. We'll walk you through when we're actually weighing there. It looks like a pretty simple process, but we've never done it. So we'll just bring you along for the ride. <laughs> So there's a cat scale and it says, what do you mind truck? Scale locator. There's two different apps. Yeah. What do you mind truck? Oh, I have I have to create an account. Create driver account. Okay. It's asking for my name. We're not a robot. Welcome, Amanda. Okay, so for the next house, please confirm your email. So confirming. Standard stuff. And then you put in the location and press accept. What? Oh, Airstream. Okay, so by Santa Rosa, there are several. Like, there are two that are two miles away from there at a pilot and at a TA. So it has a number here. So the one at the pilot is 1870. So I'm going to go back to the way my truck and do 1870. Okay, and then it tells me the location. If the location is not correct, enter the location code. Okay, but um, that's correct. Please pull your vehicle on the scale and press enter for assistance. Oh, this is like, oh, like you're right, right there. Red. Oh, cancel. I don't know. There's no cancel. So we'll do it when we're there. So there it is. You can see a little bit. Divisions. Different lines. You're way up there. Yep. And then, oh, here it is. And then um, on the pole, it has a number, or on the sign, it has the number. And that's what I'm going to put into the app. So I'm just going to get, I can't be on all of them. What are you on? He'll tell us. I'm accepting. I'm loading it. And there's a button that you press. So it's asking, I don't know why she's filming me, but it's asking, <laughs> the app is film, is asking for information that we don't have because we're not an actual truck. Fee, 1250. Except. Reading for Waymaster. Uh oh, whoa, it gave it to All right, us. you're good, we got you. That's Thank it. you. That was so fast. And that's it. Okay, it says our steer axle is 47, or, I'm sorry, our steer axle is 4,760 and our drive axle is 2,800. But that's it, that was, you pulled up, clicked a couple buttons in an app, and then the lady tells you you're good to go. So those numbers are over capacity, not so good. So we're gonna take a minute and define what these terms mean, why these numbers are over capacity, and some of the things that we've done to correct that. But first thing is a disclaimer. This entire thing is our experience. We are not professionals in this space. This is not a recommendation. We know that there are a lot of opinions in the tow vehicle and weight distribution space. And this is really our experience. So feel free to discuss in the comments below. But again, do not take this as a recommendation to do this or not do it this way. This is just our experience. First, we'll define some terms around the actual tow vehicle. So you have your gross weight for your tow vehicle that is given to you by the manufacturer. So you know exactly how much is too much weight to have as the total with the actual vehicle, the things in it, gross, meaning total. The curb weight is if your vehicle was entirely empty, how it comes off the line, what are you dealing with to begin with? So the payload capacity would be the gross weight, the absolute maximum, minus the curb weight, which is how it comes off the line. The payload capacity would be everything that you can put in there to get to that gross weight. So it should be some simple math to be able to do. 
And then another number that you need to keep in mind is your tow capacity. This is gonna be given to you from your manufacturer. And that's again, how much you can actually tow. It's not that hard of a number. I think that one makes probably the most sense and most people are familiar with that. Then you also have your tongue weight from the trailer. And you need to keep that in mind with the max hitch weight of your tow vehicle, which is between 10 and 15% of your tow capacity. We want to distinguish between the RAV4 and the RAV4 Adventure. We have the RAV4 Adventure, which is a newer model that has a higher towing capacity. So some people have asked us because they've had RAV4s and they've been a little bit confused as to why we're getting this other number. So again, just a number that's given to you by your manufacturer. So the gross vehicle weight rating per Toyota is 4,705 pounds. The curb weight is 3,655 pounds. So that means with simple math and subtraction, we have 1,050 pounds payload capacity, meaning that's how much we can actually put into the vehicle, including ourselves and <laughs> Yogi. Yogi wanted to be in the vehicle, including Yogi. That includes us, that includes our stuff, that would include a dog. So you can basically do math to figure out how much your payload capacity is with simple subtraction. So another number that you get from your manufacturer is your towing capacity. For us, that is 3,500 and 15% of that would be 525 pounds. So that would be our absolute maximum hitch weight or tongue weight from the trailer. Moving over to the base camp itself. Again, we have the base camp 16X 2021 model. The gross vehicle weight rating for that is 3,500, so that's right at the max towing capacity of the RAV4. The curb weight is 2,650, and therefore payload capacity is 850 pounds. Again, simple math to get to that number. As you saw, the numbers were above what the max capacities. So our gross weight was 4,760 pounds. So about 55 pounds over the capacity. And the base camp was within range, so it was at 2,800 pounds. So we knew that we had a little bit of playing room with those payload capacities because it is what you physically put in both of the vehicles. So a couple things of how we had things set up. We had most of our luggage was actually with us in the RAV4. We also had a toolbox in there, so that was relatively heavy. And then in the base camp, we, in the first one, we did have fresh water pretty much all the way full, but we had the black tank pretty much empty. So keep that in mind for what, how those numbers kind of came to be. So then we took a bunch of things like that toolbox, some of our luggage, things that we didn't absolutely need with us in the RAV4, and just moved them back to the trailer, put them back into the base camp. And one other consideration there is if you're putting them things in the trailer, if it's in front of or behind the axle, because that is then going to impact your tongue weight and therefore max hitch weight of your tow vehicle. So we'll go, we'll cut to us going back to another scale for the next round after we made some adjustments and share those numbers with you. All right, so we are waiting in line at the cat scales. We are doing round number two of weighing ourselves. We've adjusted some things to try and get at a better calculation of how much space, payload space we have in the Toyota with, uh, with having Carmen attached. We'll do a separate one later, just the car, to see if we can figure out the hitch weight. So you can see the location number 1040. So she's gonna put that in the app. All right, so it needs a couple of pieces of information that we weren't prepared for because it didn't need it at the last one. So she's going to run out and go grab our trailer license plate number. I'm asking for my tractor license and trailer license. So I'm just writing NA. That's our new one? Yeah. Yeah, it's better. I don't remember off the top of my head. I screenshotted it. We we'll got new numbers. numbers. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. The rearranging worked. We got our gross weight in the RAV4 down to 4,520 pounds. And then the base camp was at 2,900 pounds. So now both vehicles are within range. And although those don't equal the same total weight previously, when we went back, we were probably a little lower on how much water we had on board. We had emptied the black tank, 
but we probably were also, again, lower on our freshwater tank. In order to get what the hitch weight was, we needed to weigh the RAV4 without Carmen attached at all. So that's what we did. We went right back to the Catskill. Round three, here we go. You got the app ready? Okay. All right, what was it? 10.40. We got no trailer on this time. Just trying to get how much the car weighs oh, with us in it. Weight, but... And so this one will help us calculate our hitch weight. We'll be able to subtract some things and, and get to that number. Oh, 40-40. 40-40. Kind of perfect. Kind of exactly what I expected. We weighed the vehicle in and of itself, and it was 4,040 pounds. So subtracting that from the weight when we had Carmen, we were able to get 480 pounds. So the 480 is within the max hitch weight of 525. So now that those are all of the numbers, we've explained everything of what our actual numbers are. So what does it actually feel like when we're driving down the highway, through the mountains, into headwinds, all of those things? So to start us off talking about the mountains, this is probably the, the most extreme scenario that everyone thinks about when towing a vehicle. And that's gonna be, we did a mountain pass through Colorado, going into Denver from the west side of the state. And while we were able to do it, there, we did slow down a little bit. We were going uphill at one point and I had foot to the floor and we were maxing out at about 50, 55 miles an hour. There was no going faster than that. The speed limit was 70, and that was just about where we were gonna be. I was okay with that because I didn't really wanna be going that much faster anyways. And then as we're going down the other side braking, we were just taking it nice and easy. We obviously have the brake controller on the trailer and in the vehicle, so nice and easy down the mountains. So it's not something we're going to go do all of the time, but we know that we can do it when we need to. So something that we weren't anticipating as much was the impact of headwind. Um, again, we're newbies, so that might sound silly to not have considered that. The headwind doesn't slow us down, but it does impact the gas mileage. Diego is the name of our RAV4 adventure, and he can get up to 27 miles per gallon without Carmen. With Carmen, in good conditions, it's about 19 to 20 miles per gallon. When we have headwind, it doesn't really affect our speed as much as it affects our miles to the gallon, and that goes to be about 13. During our trip, we did have some significant headwind at times, and so we averaged at about 16.5 miles per gallon. So other things to consider is when you have the hitch weight and everything on the back of your tow vehicle, is that when you're putting that weight there, it's taking weight off of the front of your vehicle. And so if you have brakes in the front and steering's happening in the front, that can lessen some of that weight and make those a little less efficient. So for us, that is one adjustment that we're going to make is that we are going to put in an airlift system to the suspension on the back of our vehicle. So the airlift system that we got is going to add about a thousand pounds of support to the back of our vehicle. That does not improve any of your tow capacity or your payload capacity, but it adds some stability to the back of the vehicle. So when we have the trailer attached, the vehicle won't sag as much in the back, so our steering and our brakes will remain stable and hopefully the ride will be a little bit smoother. This is something we've bought, I have not installed it yet, which we'll hopefully do before our next road trip. So again, we learned as newbies that this is a really controversial topic. <laughs> so feel free to add your comments kindly in the comment section below and be sure to hit subscribe to find out where in the world Carmen goes next. Controversy. Don't be mean to us. I'm Amanda. Welcome to Rev. Oh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, are you ready or no? I'm ready. I'll stay silent. Good. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna let us sem- we're already not in our space. Hi! It's all about being confident. What's wrong with being going, confident? Doing and I'm not- that's- Like, people. See? They were gonna go adjust and then I went in front of them like a big jerk. You're not a jerk.